Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So today I'm going to be doing a quick book review, quick-ish, as quick as I can. I actually read a lot of books in February. Um, so the way this works is I rate my books anywhere from one star to five star. One star means I wish I could have the time back and not have read it, given all the great books out there, um, or I didn't even finish it. I just called it. Two stars, didn't really like it. Three stars, liked it, it was good. Four stars, it was really good, really liked it. And five stars, like, blew my mind, absolutely loved the book. So this is going to be a spoiler-free review. I'm just going to basically give you a little bit of background into the book and explain why I rated it what I did. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to I'm gonna start with my one stars, if I had them, which I did this month, and work my way up. Five stars will be at the end. So the first one star book I had a really hard time with, and I was really bummed that I had such a hard time with this one because I had really high hopes for Soul Mountain by Gao Zingjian and he actually won the literary or Nobel Prize for Literature and I was so excited about this book and it came in my Wordy Traveler Traveler box for Wordy Traveler book box for China um, and I'm reading it and I just I couldn't follow the book Every chapter felt completely disconnected, and I was never quite sure what was going on. And the, I, I just couldn't get there. And I even got on Goodreads because I'm like, is it me? I know I'm tired. <laughs> it, maybe I'm just, like, completely losing my mind, and I should be concerned and go to the doctor. But I actually found when I read people's reviews that the way the book is written is very disconnected. And it sounds like there may be this big kind of metacognitive, metaphilosophical, spiritual element to the book. Um, some of you may enjoy it, but this is just not the time in, in life for me to be able to even get it. Like, it, it just, unfortunately, my my head could not get into it. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really bummed that I didn't like this more because I was so intrigued by it. So that was a one star for me. The next one star for me was The Winter Sister, which was a thriller book that I got in my, obviously, my February Book of the Month Club selection. Um, so, yeah, I had a really, really hard time with, it came down to just, like, the character development. Like, I just, I never, I just felt like the book was, eh, it just, yeah, it just didn't really, it, it was like, here's a a typical thriller plot I'm going to follow and I didn't feel like the characters were really well developed and yeah I just and I, I think I kind of just even rushed to the end like I'm like I, I just anyway need to give it up so I will pass it along maybe someone else will um, enjoy so the other book was a book of the month selection I had selected for February as well so I obviously did not do well with Book of the Month this past month. Um, so Early Riser was another one I was just, I gave up on. I just stopped reading it halfway through. And I did read some people's reviews that said that the second half was a little bit faster paced. But this was another one that I was like so excited to read. And when I first read started it, I thought it was so witty and funny. And that it just, it just, it was just slow and tedious. And I got, I got to the point where I'm like, I, I just need to move on to another book. So the concept of this book is, um, I'm blinking. <laughs> um, so it's sort of a science fiction-y um, story. It's definitely science fiction where the main character, okay, so the world hibernates, that's what it was, for like four months or something over winter. And you have people that have to watch out for them. And they have to protect them from like night walkers and just these really funny uh, characters. And... There was humor woven into it that I thought would make it, like, oh, so enjoyable. And there's a viable dream, and the main character starts to experience it. it yeah, I just, it, it just sounds so good, and I just, I just cannot get into it. So those were my one stars for the month. Um, I had zero two stars, which is a good thing, because now everything's going up, up, up. So I had a whole bunch of three stars. So three stars for me meant it was good. I liked it. I liked it. Um, so Crazy Rich Asians was one that very light read, um, fascinating <laughs> to hear, read not just about the, the culture in Singapore and Samoa and on, but um, obviously 
the, the main characters are crazy rich. So it was fascinating to kind of hear um, a little bit of, about things at that level of the world. And um, there's a lot of assholes, but that's certainly not unique to their socioeconomic status. Um, that pretty much transcends everyone, right? And, um, yeah, and there's just points where you're like, you hate the characters. It was it was a fun read. It was a light read. I definitely could follow it, unlike Soul Mountain. Um, yeah, it, just, it was just good. It was good. And I think the, the film that they made, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun, too. Uh, and I found it, you know, why not four stars, three stars? I think it was just, it, it followed, like, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, this is the way it's unfolding. There was a, a little bit of a fun, like, development toward the end of the book that I'm like, okay, good. At least we didn't follow, like, a standard, complete standard recipe. Um, so good book, liked it, fun, light read, three stars. Same thing for One Day in December, which I got in my Books and Baths um, subscription. And I've actually seen a lot of people have really loved this book. Uh, so this book is about a um, couple that she's on a bus. I think they're in London, but she's on a bus. He's sitting at the bus stop on the street. They capture each, other, each other's gaze, and there's like this moment of, oh, like they connect, like kind of like soulmate-y meeting. And... Um, but they, they don't actually talk and she wants, she tries to get off the bus or hesitates and he gets up like he's about to like get on the bus, but he doesn't make it and they don't see each other. And she thinks about him for a year and her and a friend even talk about him. I think they call him bus boy or something or bus stop boy. And lo and behold, um, her, a friend of hers, a very dear friend introduces him as her boyfriend. She started dating him. And so it's sort of about this um, long-term friendship and relationship that um, the group of them um, have um, and just kind of negotiating the fact that it, you know, they feel they connect, like there is a connection that these two people have. So again, a good book. I liked it. Um, very enjoyable, easy read. Um, definitely one if you do read a thons. Like the three-star ones, I feel like um, are good ones, good ones to add as well. The next one was another Books and Baths book, The Bookshop on the Corner. And this was a real, like, cozy, cozy, cozy read. And I absolutely adore this cover. Look at that cover. Isn't that just beautiful? I still, just, every time I look at it, oh, so pretty. So basically, this book is, um, I think it's in Scotland. And is it in Scotland? Yes. So the main character, um, working in a library and, you know, not the most booming industry, unfortunately. And um, so she kind of has to reconsider what she's going to do. I think she she does lose her job. And she purchases a van. And she decides to start out kind of with a rolling bookstore. And it's, it's just it's just fun. Yeah, it's just a really good, another curl up and read, light, enjoyable. Um, not going to blow your mind, but it's a good, it's a good read. And that was kind of the theme with these, with these three. And it keeps going with the three star. So the next one, um, very different genre though, Thin Air, A Ghost Story. This was one that came in my Blind Date with a Book, um, subscription that I, I I'm no longer getting. I'm going to pause it just because I have so much to catch up on, but I was getting that one from the UK. Um, so this one is basically about a group that, um, uh, uh, are they in, forget what country, um, totally blanking on what country they're in. Oh, but they're five Englishmen. I can at least get that. And I forget the culture of people that assist them, um, to help them climb this mountain where like people have died before. And as they're climbing the mountain, um, there's basically a presence and the book, the presence could be a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no spoilers I'm giving away. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. And it's, it's a thriller and it's fun. And um, yeah, I didn't like it wasn't again like some thrillers where you're just like, oh, it was just it was good. It was good. It was a very good ghost story and a, a fun twist down a ghost, ghost story because it's not around a house. It's on a massive mountain. So there you go on that one. Last three-star book for me was a January book of the month selection made by Stephanie Land. Um, this book was interesting. This is a memoir written about, um, obviously, a woman who's a maid. But it's not really all about that. It's about her um, having a child. I forget at what age. Um, but it interrupts her going off to college and struggling um, from uh, more, you know, being in poverty, a lower socioeconomic status, so polar opposite of crazy rich Asians, 
Um, and having to be like on government assistance and her experience with that, um, trying to raise a child, dealing with some other things going on, abusive relationships, uh, and dealing with like what you go through to get public assistance and some of the stigmas that are associated with that. And then as well, her experience of being a maid. Um, this was one why three stars for me. So there were a couple things that went on. The, 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 I read a lot of reviews on people with this author, and there's a lot of criticism and irritation if you've heard about this book and you've read reviews on some of the author's decision making throughout the time period of her life during which she wrote this book. And I get it. I get it. A lot of times she, she did seem to place a lot of weight on negative things that happened to her, less on the positive things that happened to her as she wrote them for the book. But at the same time, I, I feel like that's who she is and this is her story. And I never feel like, you know, when <sighs> making the right decisions get us out of bad circumstances quicker. I, I don't know. For me, it's just it's easy to judge, but it was I like getting a glimpse into different worlds and but keeps some people there a little bit longer than others. Maybe that they do make 10 bad decisions instead of the three you or I may have made or I may have made 20 and stay there a little bit longer. So my issue with the book wasn't around what a lot of people's was. Um, I just took that as par for the course. I, I don't expect everyone to make... <laughs> I don't know. I just sometimes people do contribute to their own negative circumstances, but that's life. We all do to a greater or lesser extent, right? For me, it was about two things. There, it the book ne the book never explored what it like. It just jumped in like midlife at a certain phase where she was already in a bad spot. But it sounds like she came from a middle class background, and it felt like there was something that got, it, it It just felt like something was missing. And there was a lot of that as I was reading it, where I'm like, but, but wait, how, who was this? And who are these friends? Or who is this person? And so I, I felt like her, her exploring was limited, her, her reflection, and her theme development was limited. So, you know, it's like, was the book about I, it, it just, it was not bad, but that's why three stars and not four or five. So that was a lot of information. Um, but I still think it's an interesting read and a fun, and a fun read if you're into, like I am, under, you know, getting a feel for other people's lifestyles and a little bit of appreciation um, for challenges you may not have had to experience. Um, four star, I have one four star read and the rest are five. A Woman is No Man, a novel by Ida Fromm. So this was a Book of the Month Club sub, 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 sub selection for February as well. This book was interesting. It was a Pakistani, oh no, excuse me, three generations of Palestinian American women. Um, so that are kind of coping with an Arab culture, clashing with um, some generations being an Arab in America. Um, and but the key is being a woman, a female Arab in America and in um, Palestine. And it deals with things like arranged marriages and just a female versus a male's role in, in that culture and um, family relationships and obligations and all of that good stuff. And um, I really I liked I really liked the book. I it was one of those where, she mentions, the author mentions, and I read this in other people's reviews, how the culture itself is one of, we don't air our dirty laundry. It's just, it's shameful. And I respect that. And I know how hard it must be to, um, to do this when it's so against like your culture and how you're raised. And I love the fact that she was able to tell this story through characters and explore uh, that kind of theme of um, what a woman's role is in the culture, um, you know, and what, but why not five stars? I, um, there was just a, a little bit of disconnect for me um, with some of the, the way the characters were. Um, like at one point, a male character, like a, a patriarch in the family is suddenly in the kitchen 
so uh, helping cook a dish with the other one of the other female main characters and who had no indication it, it, the stereotypes were just so strong it just didn't make sense it's like wait how did this happen what is he doing there <laughs> like it it just seemed inconsistent and um so there were a couple like elements like that where um they just felt like the characters were just um not as fully developed um, or consistent in that particular case, as I would have liked, which would have made it a five-star read for me. Um, I do believe this was a debut author as well, so really phenomenal, especially for a, a first book. Okay, so now we're going to be like a 20-minute video. I'm going to have to hurry this up, but these are my favorites. I had three five-star books this month, so let's talk about what they were. Um, okay, so Once Upon a River, I think, was this from Health... T book crate? Yeah, I believe this was from Health Tea Book Crate. So this book is, oh God, I don't even know how to describe the feel of this book because it is sort of like fairy tale, modern y something. I don't know. It is, it is just such a unique setting and such a unique feel to this book. I found it intriguing and I adored her writing in the beginning is just, it's poetic. It, it, you know, like I love Louise Petty's writing. I feel like there's just something, it's just beautiful the way she writes. And I felt that way about this author as well. There were points where I just wanted to bust out a highlighter, which I never do. And like, oh, I love this line. I love this line. And that was very much the case. So what's the book about? There's a town on a river in the way the author describes the river. See, the book darts, if you just saw my page one unboxing, I should have stuck a book dart in that page because I would have loved to have read that to you. But um, there's a town by a river and <laughs> there's an inn in the town by the river and there are people and I'll stop. But anyway, man walks in with a drowned child, girl, and um, he's severely wounded as well. He passes out, child all of a sudden comes back to life, and people are like, whoa, was, was she dead? Was she not dead? Did we misunderstand? And so there's a little, a lot of mystery around who is this child. And it's funny because the whole town is drawn to this child. And, like, her identity, like, there's a group that thinks she's this person. There's another group that thinks she's this other person. And there's another group that thinks she's even a third person or something and it's like who is she really and it and so the whole book is just sort of this um, evolving quirkiness between all of the personalities within the town and and who this child really is and it's like I said and it's just got this fairy tale-ish feel to it um it, it's just it's just a, it's a beautiful book so that is one of my five stars Two left, two left. So my final two five stars were both from Page One Books for last month. One I purchased because they're now doing a monthly book club, and one was my book selection for the month. So these books, I'm going to tell you right now, are not feel-good books. So you're going to read, if you read these books, you're going to want my three-star books that I said were really cozy reads to offset what's going to happen when you read these blow books that blew my mind. Adelaide is about a woman who is married, has a young child, has a career, and has a compulsive need to have sex with um, barely strangers or people she's acquaintances with. You would think of them kind of more as like a fuck buddy. And she does it to an extent where she's jeopardizing um, her relationship with her husband, her career, and being a mom. And it, it be, it's almost an obsession. I'm mean, in a compulsion. Um, and the whole time you're reading the book, you don't, it's, it's the author. Her name is Layla Slimani. She just does this beautiful job of creating these characters that you somehow, it, you're both horrified by, but you're concerned for. And I love that. And when I ended this book, I just sat there after like, okay, what was this? What is going on with this character? I mean, you get a little bit of her background, but the author intentionally never describe like gives you an answer to why she is the way she is. So you're kind of left with this, like you're hypothesizing, and you just sit there. If you're analytically minded at all, you're you're gonna just sit there for like two hours when you close this book, like just thinking about it. Like it could have been this, it could have been this. You know, was it this? 
what was she, was she self-destructing? I mean, it's just amazing. Absolutely loved it. And a quick read as well. Final one was the one for a book club selection for, with page one and like a wine club they're doing conjoined now that I um, went to, The Perfect Nanny. Same theme with this. This author is on my radar now. Um, same author, Leela Layla Slamani. Um, so The Perfect Nanny is about a couple who um, I believe live in French Moroccan um, lawyer. And this one I believe is in Paris. So I have to look at the author. Liz. But anyway, couple have two young children. Um, the hair and nanny who comes across is just being an amazing nanny and is great with the kids and things unfold that are not good. And um, it's horrific. And the whole time you're kind of going through what happens, and I, I'm not going to give anything away, but you're, it's the same kind of thing where you're, you're horrified by certain characters, but you also get, she gives you enough of a context and a background to understand how they got there. Not that it makes it, you're like, oh, this is okay because, no, it's not okay, but you're like, I, I, I get where this, how this person got to be this way. Um, and it's just really unsettling. I think that, that piece to it. Um, this is another book that when I closed it, I just sat there. And you're pretty much sucked in from page one. Um, so it's another really powerful, but very unpleasant read, but very thought provoking. Uh, so absolutely, absolutely adored, um, the perfect nanny as well. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it. So it's, it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to make a nanny reference, but I couldn't because it's, it's Monday night. I'm tired. But anyway, those are my books for February. If you actually made it through the whole video, thank you for watching. Definitely feel free to ask me questions or if you've read any of these books, would love to hear what you thought. Um, and stay tuned because I'm already gearing up. My March reads. I'm almost done with book one, so I'm going to go get that rolling right now. Uh, thank you as always. Happy reading.